Hey, morning. Let's go over this order on my motion to suppress and dismiss that I got back from the judge. Finally got some good news. Hmm, there it is. All right. <clears throat> Make sure it's scrolling. So, first thing to touch on is uh, they ended up removing Cynthia Giltner, the prosecutor. <clears throat> they put a guy named Kevin Crow. Um, can I say about Kevin? A little more experienced, a little more personable, still corrupt. Still took an L, <laughs> as we'll see here. So, <clears throat> ruling on defendants, motion to suppress, and motion to dismiss. I was going to go over the motion I filed, but this is only three pages. The judge goes over everything much more concise. And um, this is pretty interesting. So, this also touches on, so this is only dealing with the three charges from the stop, the Fourth Amendment violations. The four charges from the stories that the employees told um, are subject of the anti slap motion that this will touch on a little bit here and then more at the very end. All right, procedural history. Defendant filed a motion to suppress with the court on March 30th, 2023, following a review of the party's responsive pleadings. The court heard oral arguments from both parties on May 17th, 2023. On May 22nd, 2023, the court granted defendant's motion to suppress, ultimately resulting in the dismissal of counts five, six, and seven of the complaint. The state timely appealed the court's ruling on October 27th, 2023. The Yavapai County Superior Court reversed the trial court's ruling and remanded this case back to the trial court for further proceedings. Um, <clears throat> touched on that in the update, but yeah, that was um, that was four months of just wasted time. Anyway, uh, on February 9th, 2023, the parties appeared for an evidentiary hearing on defendant's March 30th, 2023 motion to suppress. The court proceeded to receive sworn evidence, both oral and documentary. The following witnesses were sworn and testified. Uh, Yavapai County Sheriff's Officers uh, Patrick Bowen, that's little tiny chin strap dude and Samuel Contreras, um, Mr. Convenient. <clears throat> the following exhibits were admitted without objection at the evidentiary hearing. 911 audio, um, the yeah, authentication paper, the call detail reports, like the CAD. Um, uh, it's basically a written report of all of the radio traffic and body cam. Hmm. On February 2nd, 2024, prior to the evidentiary hearing, defendant filed a motion to dismiss based on ARS 12-751, Arizona's anti-slap law. Defendant alleges the state violated the act by engaging in conduct that deterred, prevented, or retaliated against defendant for the exercise of his constitutionally protected rights. Just to touch on that, <clears throat> and I think the judge says it in the end, but um, this is the first time in Arizona, uh, at least cases that have been published, that the anti-slap law has been used in a criminal case. Uh, maybe even in the country. I, I can't find anything in the country. Um, it's usually in civil cases where like somebody talks about a company doing a project or something, the company sues the person and the person does this anti-slap because of their, um, it was freedom of speech. Anyway, maybe we'll go over that, <clears throat> um, the ARS, 
uh, before the next order. But anyway, uh, continuing on. Motion to suppress. <clears throat> on December 8th, 2022, Yavapai County Sheriff's Office Deputy Contreras responded to a request by Thousand Trails Management to be present while staff met with defendant to address an issue from the night prior between defendant and park a park employee. Deputy Contreras testified that the initial information he received was via Yavapai County Sheriff Office dispatch or from the mobile terminal in his patrol vehicle. At no time did Deputy Contreras speak directly with the reporting party. <clears throat> Deputy Contreras testified that he initially proceeded to the defendant's RV site, intending to wait for management personnel to arrive. Deputy Contreras stated that upon arrival at the defendant's RV site, he did not initially intend to detain or arrest defendant. While waiting, YCSO dispatch advised Deputy Contreras that defendant had left the entrance of the park and was now at the management office. About this same time, Deputy Boehm was arriving at the park to provide backup to Deputy Contreras. Um, I'll get the audio. <clears throat> this was a very interesting, well, the interesting for me, a very interesting hearing. Interesting, mainly in the sense of just how, you know, how, how they'll just lie. Um, they repeatedly said I was never under arrest. Every time I'd say, and then you placed me under arrest, you said this, they, they, their response would be, you were never placed under arrest that day. Um, which I'm sure is a big reason the judge granted this. I mean, I think it's stupid for them to just go in court and lie. It'd be better if they just didn't show up, but whatever. <clears throat> As Deputy Contreras and Boehm approached the park management's office, they observed defendant's vehicle parked on the shoulder of the roadway. Both positioned their patrol vehicles directly in front of defendant's vehicle. Defendant was seated in his vehicle. Man, we read out loud in a while. <clears throat> Deputies then exited their patrol vehicles and approached the driver's side door of the defendant's vehicle. The deputies immediately demanded that the defendant exit the vehicle. Defendant refused to exit his vehicle. The deputies then advised the defendant that he was under arrest, attempted to enter the defendant's vehicle, and threatened to break the driver's side window. <clears throat> when defendant asked why he was being arrested, the deputies responded that the de defendant was under arrest for disorderly conduct. Defendant requested to speak to a supervisor. A YCSO supervisor arrived at the scene and spoke with the defendant. At this point, the deputies were able to speak with the Thousand Trails staff. The YCSO supervisor determined that the defendant would not be cited or trespassed from Thousand Trails property. The defendant was permitted to leave the scene and YCSO deputies left the area. <laughs> On or about December 29th, 2022, Yavapai County Sheriff's Office Sergeant Hooten <laughs> That's going to be an interesting hearing for, to show. Hooten is a hoot. <clears throat> Conducted additional investigation relating to defendant's alleged altercation with a park employee that had previously occurred on December 7th, 2022. Probable cause for arrest. The court finds that YCSO deputies intentionally and effectively restrained the defendant's freedom of movement when the deputies blocked the defendant's vehicle, verbally advised the defendant that he was under arrest, attempted to forcefully enter the defendant's vehicle, and then threatened to break the driver's side window. <clears throat> An arrest occurs when a reasonable person in the defendant's position would have considered himself or herself to be in the custody be in custody given the degree of restraint under the circumstances. Um, <clears throat> this is all the judge's case law that he's citing. I did obviously my own, but they find their own to back up what they decide. <clears throat> a person is arrested when officers by force or show of authority terminate or restrain a person's freedom of movement through means intentionally applied. 
Despite the fact that defendant was not removed from the vehicle or ultimately handcuffed, the court finds that a reasonable person in the defendant's situation would have considered himself arrested. The court has carefully considered the body cam video and the subsequent testimony of the deputies. The court finds at the time of the defendant's arrest, Yavapai County Sheriff's Office deputies lacked probable cause to believe defendant had committed a crime. Arrests are subject to the requirements of the Fourth Amendment, and law <coughs> and law enforcement officers must have probable cause to believe a suspect has committed a crime. An officer must have knowledge of reasonable facts and circumstances that an offense has been or is being committed. Both deputies testified that prior to their contact with defendant, Neither had observed disorderly or threatening behavior by defendant. Additionally, neither deputy had previously spoken with Thousand Trail staff. <clears throat> Yavapai County Sheriff's Office deputies unlawfully arrested defend the defendant without sufficient probable cause in violation of the, the defendant's Fourth Amendment rights. Evidence directly obtained as a result of illegal conduct and evidence indirectly obtained by using or exploiting the illegally obtained evidence, fruit of the poisonous tree, may not be admitted in court as evidence against the person whose reasonable expectation of privacy was violated. Such derivative evidence can be uh, can include tangible items or oral statements. Oh, these are good words. <clears throat> it is hereby ordered, granting the defendant's motion to suppress and suppressing all evidence obtained by Yavapai County Sheriff's Office deputies on December 8th, 2022, including oral statements or tangible items. <clears throat> uh, the subsequent evidence obtained by Sergeant Hooten will not be suppressed. A sufficient period of time had passed from the date of arrest and Sergeant, Sergeant Hooten's subsequent investigation and Sergeant Hooten's subsequent investigation relied upon independent sources used to determine the alleged illegal conduct or probable cause relating to counts one, two, three, and four of the complaint. <clears throat> that gets taken care of real quick. Uh, it is further ordered Dismissing counts five, six, and seven of the complaint. So <clears throat> now it's where it gets, now is where we get into uncharted territory um, using an anti slap statute to get a, uh, to do a motion to dismiss a criminal case. Okay, motion to dismiss. Having disposed of counts five, six, and seven of the complaint pursuant to defendant's motion to suppress. The court will now address whether the remaining counts, one, two, three, and four, can be dismissed for violation of Arizona's anti slap statute. Um, anti slap is a uh, slap is a strategic lawsuit against public participation. <clears throat> um, you know, big way of saying, you know, you did something that was constitutionally protected and somebody litig did litigation against you to tie you up in court and um, basically to chill your First Amendment and anyone that sees what's happening to you's First Amendment. So if you can show that that's, um, you know, the foundation is in retaliation, then you'll see, I mean, you'll see. Let's just get into it. <clears throat> the court has reviewed and considered the defendant's motion to dismiss as well as the party's responsive pleadings. Kind of. That gets into that. Because when I originally filed this, the state just ignored it. Um, now, it wasn't under the anti slap statute. I just did a motion to dismiss based on First Amendment violations. This is back in May, um, before I even knew this statute existed. And so when I became aware of this statute, after reading it, I realized the motion that I'd filed to dismiss based on First Amendment retaliation covered all the bases. And so um, what I entered in that he talked about, I entered in right before trial was really just a motion, um, to convert the first motion into the anti-slap statute 
which then gave gives the judge authority to do a lot of stuff that he wouldn't have authority to do otherwise. <clears throat> okay, that being said, Arizona's anti-slap statute pr protects the lawful exercise of the right of petition, the right of speech, the freedom of the press, the right to freely associate, or the right to peaceably assemble pursuant to the United States Constitution or Arizona Constitution. RS 12751A, the right to petition for redress of grievances is one of the fundamental rights guaranteed by the First Amendment. <clears throat> the court notes that while there are many reported civil cases addressing 12751 and its predecessor, 12752, the court is unable to locate any Arizona case law wherein a defendant has asserted the protection of Arizona's anti-slap statute in the context of a criminal prosecution. Regardless, the statute clearly contemplates criminal prosecution as a form of legal action. See 12751J12. A defendant who files a motion to dismiss or quash has the burden of establishing prima facie proof that the legal action was subsequently motivated by a desire to deter, retaliate against, or prevent the lawful exercise of a constitutional right. <clears throat> oh, you can't hear that plain. <clears throat> The defendant may submit evidence based on the record, a sworn affidavit, or other evidence that is submitted with the motion to dismiss or quash. Should the court find the defendant has established the prima facie proof, the court may order the state to file a response. <clears throat> the state may rebut the prima facie by showing that the legal action on which the defendant's motion is based, one, just is justified by clearly established law and two that the state did not initiate the legal action in order to deter prevent or retaliate against the defendant's exercise of a constitution of constitutional rights by any of the following just a quick note um this little and right here is very important <clears throat> because it's not either of these they have to um cover both. So that just becomes pertinent later on. <clears throat> Establishing that the person who initiated and conducted an investigation that resulted in the legal action and that the dis and that uh sorry. This is okay, they can establish that they um This had to happen sometime during this. <clears throat> okay. So the state has to establish um, that they did not initiate the legal action in order to deter, prevent, or retaliate against the defendant's exercise of a constitutional rights. And they can do that by any of the following. There we go. Establishing that the person who initiated the conduct and conducted the investigation. Uh, so initiated Lieutenant Johnson and conducted uh, Hooten an investigation that resulted in the legal action and that made the decision to pursue the legal action. No, no, it doesn't matter. Um, Cause it's also an and so once, you, you know, because I filed the complaint with Johnson, Johnson substantiated the complaint. Then after I wanted to escalate it, that's when he did all this. Um, it doesn't really matter who did the investigation because, you know, they just do that for plausible den deniability, which is that Exactly what they tried to do in the hearing, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. <clears throat> All right. B, establishing that the state actor has a uh, consistent practice of pursuing similar legal actions against similarly situated persons who did not lawfully exercise constitutional rights. I mean, uh, again, big way of saying uh, you always get someone's complaint, tell them they were right, and then three weeks later file charges on them and tell them they were wrong. So if they can establish that as a pattern, that would be B, which obviously is ridiculous. <clears throat> or C, producing any other evidence that the court finds sufficient. All right. 
<clears throat> try not to get tongue tied here. Uh, CARS 12751B1 for the above. Prima facie proof. Formal complaints to law enforcement to a law enforcement officer have traditionally been considered a lawful exercise of a right of petition. Um, so basically saying my complaint established prima facie proof under 12752. Um, maybe you said it meant one, but it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> In this case, defendant's motion to dismiss and his responsive pleadings allege that defendant filed a complaint against Deputy Contreras and Deputy Boehm regarding defendant's interactions with both deputies on December 8th, 2022. Defendant includes a sworn statement and copies of emails between himself and YCSO Lieutenant John Johnson from the dates of December 9th, 2022 to December 27th, 2022. Defendant further alleges that Lieutenant Johnson contacted Captain Tom Bolts specifically regarding defendant's interactions with the deputies on December 8th, 2022. Defendant finally alleges that on December 20th, 2022, Lieutenant Johnson ordered Lieutenant or Sergeant Hooten to conduct additional investigations relating to defendant's interactions with Thousand Trails staff, which ultimately formed the basis of counts one, two, three, and four. The videos of, you know, the body cam where Hooten basically leads them and, you know, they tell their wild stories. <clears throat> Pursuant to 12751B, the court finds that defendant has established prima facie proof in support of his motion to dismiss. The court will direct the state to file a responsive brief addressing the factors set forth in ARS 12751B1. Pursuant to ARS 12751, the court finds at its own discretion that the defendant's motion to dismiss is timely filed. Um, yeah, that was also important because technically you're supposed to do it at the beginning because um, really this the whole intent of an anti-slap motion is to stop litigation in the beginning. So you don't have to go through the whole process. And I don't know if I had filed this in the beginning, if it would have been as clear, obviously I had the emails once I got the FOIA request. So um, it would have been, it would have been nice, but really the way they dragged things out, I didn't waive one day of time and it took over a year to get this resolved. I mean, that's supp supposedly a speedy trial in these justice courts, but whatever. <clears throat> Good news right here. Um, it is hereby ordered setting an evidentiary hearing on February 22nd, 2024 at 1.30. All parties must appear in person. The bench trial set for that day, which um, is vacated. So, which was pretty awesome. He, um, he, the, the basically the judge, I, I believe, already just you know could see what was happening and he may have been open obviously he was open-minded if he had been given evidence that uh would discount my motion but he wanted to have an evidentiary hearing and let the state present whatever evidence it wanted so that they couldn't go back and file another you know appeal and just just drag this out even longer like they did with the first one um and then they you know it is here i ordered the state shall file a response um so this hearing on February 22nd is where Hooten, <laughs> the first time I saw Hooten, and uh, man, talk about a scumbag, but it's classic. The um, I was able to record it, but my audio for the, like when he lost his shit, basically, I didn't have great audio for. So... Just real quick <laughs> to go over what happened. Um, they're doing we're doing the evidentiary hearing. Hooten is the only witness that they call. And, you know, like he describes in his little body cam video, he um he's a big dude. And he clearly wanted to, you know, alpha male the whole situation. But um a couple key points were his we, the basically I, we couldn't get the the uh stuff i was trying to show the body cam video of him um being you know leading the witness on the big tv screen so the judge allowed me to just use my computer 
but we all had to gather around the computer. <clears throat> and the judge comes off of the bench and is like, I was like, you know, I'm thinking I'll just do it back at my table and because the audio is most important. But the judge is like, no, let's all get, you know, gather around the defendant stand. We can set it there and we'll all be able to hear it and see it. I was like, okay, cool. <clears throat> so I set it there and we're doing it. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing anything. I'm just hitting pause button and I'm asking him questions. But, you know, I was standing and Hooten was sitting and he basically started throwing a tantrum saying that he wasn't comfortable with me being this close to him. And so I tried to back up. I'm like, well, I, can't, I have to hit the, this, you know, I feel to hit pause. So I can't stand across the courtroom. So I'm like, where can I stand that you're going to be comfortable? And, uh, you know, he's just like, I'm not comfortable. You know, I don't want anyway. He just threw a tantrum, made it so we had to stop. And, you know, it didn't look good for the judge. I'll tell you that much. Um, <clears throat> you know, trying to trying to act like a professional and and say that he wasn't biased against me but he's obviously you know i never i never met him before i don't know why he'd be acting that way towards me but i think the judge also saw i'm just trying to do my thing and people's reaction you know i, I, I honestly i think he proved the point that people feel intimidated by me when i'm just trying to do something i mean i have no intent to Doing it, you know, to intimidate. But uh, so thanks, Hoot, and I appreciate that. And then the other funny thing was, um, you know, he did all these body cam interviews, but he specifically never talked to me, never came to get the videos that I had um, that showed me interacting with the staff. So I just questioned him on why didn't you come and talk to me? You know, you didn't even stop by, you didn't even stick the card in my door. And, you know, I basically got him. I was like, you know, so were you scared to come talk to me? Like, why didn't you just bring back up? And he went, you know, he had to just keep repeating how he's not scared of me. Nothing I could do could make him scared. But I just used that later against him because I was like, well, if you're not scared of it. Could, OK, the reason I brought up scared is. His excuse for not coming to interview me was that he had seen what happened with the officers when they tried to talk to me at my truck. And he thought that if he came and tried to talk to me, I would react in a way that would be, you know, violent or whatever. I mean, he just sounds like an idiot saying this stuff. You're supposed to be a 16-year veteran investigator. You think no one sees through these games? Anyway, uh, you know, you took an L. I appreciate you helping me out, Hooten. And so that being said, uh, I'll get the audio and try to upload it. But, um, you know, these guys are just they lie. I, I The biggest thing that goes through my head. They've always done this, man. It's just people haven't had cell phones. And so, you know, last five, 10 years, especially last five years, you know, these cops are just getting their ass handed to them over and over because they're just used and taught to. And all the old veterans are like, dude, just lie. Everyone believes your side. There's nothing. That, it doesn't matter what they say. Unless there's video evidence contradicting you, you're going to win. And they, I mean, it's really incredible to think how many people, I mean, you know, innocent people get convicted, but you just don't, video, video everything. I mean, that's, that's the lesson to all this. So that being said, I'm going to quit rambling. Everybody have a good day. Appreciate all the support and uh, see you in the comments. Take care. Let's see if how if I can shut this down.